here. No teen class today. Tony and Laren are on vacation, and praise the Lord. Let's give our teachers a hand for being there and helping and doing their part. <laughs> praise the Lord. I promise you I will not preach over three hours, all right? I have not preached for over two weeks. Uh, we had our team uh, take over two weeks ago, and last week, Brother Bill Holwager was here and shared with us, and I just really am so excited to bring what God has laid on my heart uh, for you all today, amen? God is good, amen? He's faithful in every way, and I think sometimes we forget how faithful God is when we are in trouble and when we're facing battles, sometimes we focus more on our problem and more on the battle, and we forget how faithful and true God has been throughout our lives. I think if every one of us would look back, we could see the evidence of God moving in our life in every way. I was yesterday, I was talking to my brother on the phone, and he reminded me of something that has, has really encouraged me in a place in my life on several times, but he reminded me of something uh, that happened the day I was born. And I'm not going to share that with you yet, I, don't, I can't do that right now, but I, I, he reminded me of something, and I realized, man, even from the moment I was born to the day that I'm standing here today, I have evidence in my life of how good God is. Amen. Let's give him another hand clap of praise. He's worthy of all our praise. You know, I was praying over the last few weeks, and as you minister and as, you be, as a pastor or a minister, and, and all of us are ministers in some way, but one of the things that we always seem to uh, run into in, in our own lives and in other people's lives are those things in our lives that just won't go away. Those things in our lives that we come up against and they turn into a battle and the battle just keeps going and keeps going and keeps going. It may be your health. It may be your finances. It may be a relationship. It may be a job. We can talk about all these different things. But I think every one of us and you under the sound of my voice and you by social media and me standing here today, I guarantee you there is something in our lives that we have to continually endure. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me this past few weeks and began to encourage me. And one of the things that the Holy Spirit uh, gave me that we're going to begin to do a series on, and the series title is Outlasting the Enemy. Look at your neighbor and say, I have to outlast my enemy. You know, sometimes it's not about how you fight the battle. Sometimes it's not about how good you are at fighting the battle or how bad you are at fighting the battle. Sometimes it's just enduring to the end of the battle. And the Holy Spirit began to speak to me and say, if, we, if I had more Christians that would understand that they need to hang in there and hold on, no matter how long or how hard the battle has been, hang on, hang on, hang on. The devil is besieging us. He has uh, uh, set out against us. He has surrounded us. And he may uh, uh, hang out there as long as he possibly can to try to outlast us. And we need to understand today that we have victory in Christ Jesus to be able to outlast him. Now, here's the awesome thing about God's word and what God does for us. My title today, this title message, is God's Sustaining Power. See, I don't know if we really grab a hold of this. It's great to get a miracle. Come on. Everybody wants a miracle. But how many know that God sometimes doesn't work in immediate fashion? But we do know this. If God doesn't do something immediately, he does it eventually. Amen? So when it doesn't happen immediately, God has put it in my heart to, to, to do it this way, and I'm sharing it with you today. If God doesn't do something immediately, then I prepare myself for the eventually. There might be a battle. Do I know how long it's going to last? No, I don't. Do I know how long or what I'm going to have to go through to get to the end of it? No, I don't. But one thing I know for sure is the sustaining power of God will be there. Amen. Give him another hand clap of praise. 
It does not matter how long the battle goes. It does not matter how long and how hard the difficult road is to get there. It doesn't matter where you are in this battle or how long it seems to have been hanging on. One thing I can guarantee you through the word of God is that we have a promise that he will never leave us. He will always be with us. He will take care of our need and he that endures to the end shall be saved. Amen. Give him another hand clap of praise. That's a promise. And we need to hold on to that promise today, amen? As I looked up the word outlast, here's what it means. It says to exist, be active, or live longer than something or someone else. In other words, outlasting the devil means that I have to live past him, and I have to get to the place to where I'm living past where he thinks he can stop me. And I'm going to live past that. I'm going to get through that. I'm going to go beyond that place. And then I looked up the word sustain. It means to support. How many have felt God support you over your time in your life with him? Amen. Then it also says here that it's to hold you up. How many have had God hold you up? You knew he was holding you up in your situation. Sustain also means to bear up uh, from below. That means how many know uh, sometimes you may think you've reached the very lowest point in your life and there's no other lower place, but I got news for you. There's a hand underneath that lower place and he's got his hand on you and he's going to hold you up in your situation. Amen. And to bear the weight of a situation. How many know he bears all of our problems and our trials and our struggles? But sometimes we want to hold on to those and not give it to him. And today I want to share with you something that God has laid on my heart. And let's just uh, uh, go through what God has laid down. But it's amazing to me today, folks, that so many Christians today live their lives like this life is a hundred yard dash and not a long distance run. I don't know about you, but life is a long distance run. Life's about enduring to the end. Life's about having problems come to us and, and come to our household and come to our families and, and, and troubles and trials are there everywhere we go and every step that we take. It's all about getting to the end. It's all about enduring. It's not a fast 100-yard dash. Let's get there and get it done. This mentality has entered into the church world today, and it's caused us to want everything now. I feel this with all my heart. We have Christians today that are so programmed by the world that they think God is Amazon. Can you imagine looking into heaven? Come on, go with me now. Remember, you got to really go to places to really understand. But I want you to vision looking into heaven and seeing God in all his glory sitting on the throne and his son, Jesus, at the right hand of him sitting there. And there's this big smile splash on the back of the wall. And if you all know what Amazon looks like, that's what I'm trying to say. He's not an Amazon God, folks. You don't get it when you want it, how you want it. Come on. Oh, it's okay. This will come out okay. I know I'm scaring some people now. This is all going to come out good. Because guess what? God is good. But we have to understand this. God works in his way. He works how he wants to work. And guess what? He works in his time frame. And there's where we get into trouble sometimes because we get a mentality that says to us, God, I want it, and I want it now, and this is how I want it. This is how I want it to happen. So we have a church world out there that's looking to God and looking to him sometimes as an Amazon Amazon God, and it, it really worries me sometimes how we do that. In this series, we want to examine and learn the importance of outlasting our enemy. We need to learn how do I endure? How do I make it? What do I have to do to get through this battle that I'm in? This battle may have already lasted 20 years for you. It may have already been going on for 10 years for you. I can't count the number of years that you've been going through a battle, or you may just be going into one and you're wondering when it's going to end. But I have news for you today. There is a way that we can endure all things and outlast our enemy. As we 
look at Scripture. It's full of men and women of God who outlasted or endured the devil's uh, long-term besiege on them. A miracle, uh, everybody loves the miracle testimony where something happened like that and immediately. But still, when we talk about enduring a situation to the end and we get victory over that situation, we have learned so much. And guess what? When we finally endure to the end, not only do we get to the end of that situation and we have grown and we have learned more through that situation by enduring it, we are now useful to others that need to hear you say your testimony. Other people who are going through bad things need to hear you say, let me tell you what happened. I went through the same situation, and I went through so many years, and I got through this, and God got me through it. How many know people need to hear that? How many of you in this place today need to hear somebody say, I made it through. God got me through. Amen? And that's what happens when we endure. That's what happens when we stick to it. We trust God and lean on that miracle working power. That's the sustaining power of God. Man, what a miracle working God when he sustains us. The thing that is most important while we endure is this, is to know that we have a God who will sustain us and keep us in every way. It is important to understand that it's what's on the inside of us Come on now, we're going to get down to it. It's what's on the inside of us that will sustain us when everything on the outside is falling apart. It's what's on the inside that counts. It's on the inside that's going to give us the resources and the things that we need to endure the battle, to outlast the enemy. The greatest danger, listen to this, I'm going to share some history with you. The greatest danger to any ancient city was not what was on the outside, it was what was not on the inside of their city walls. Listen to this. Most of the time, great armies would strategically surround a city and occupy the area around it so that no one it could enter in and no one could come out. It became a waiting game to see whose resources would last the longest. Listen now. Then weakness and panic and desperation would take over when a city would run out of food, when the city would run out of water. Uh, uh, and then all of a sudden now they were in a panic situation and a lot of cities were taken by the enemy just because the enemy waited them out. And they surrendered. Satan is loving to do that to us today. He wants to do that very thing. He wants to surround us with our troubles and trials. He wants to keep us surrounded and make us feel like we're not going to get in or out of our situation. And he patiently waits, just like the scripture says, like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour, waiting on us to give up. Waiting on us to say, I don't have any more resources. I got nothing left. I can't do this anymore. I can't make it. And I want us to understand this today. We do not need to panic in those situations like these cities did. I, I, I did this because I want, I want you to really grasp at, at the power of, uh, of waiting on a siege when, when, when armies would come. I, I went back into history and I got the top five longest besieges in the history, number five was the siege of Deprana, and it was 249 to 241 or 241 to 249 BC, and it lasted eight years. I want you to imagine being in a city that you live in, and for eight years you had an army surrounding you and keeping anything from coming in and keeping anything from going out. And in every one of these situations I'm going to read to you, the battle was won because they waited them out. The second longest one uh, was the siege at Thess Thessalonica, and it lasted eight years or more, a little bit more. 
the siege of, I can't even say the word, it's, it's uh, uh, so foreign I can't even say it, but 1570 to 1580, it lasted 10 years. The longest uh, uh, battle that has ever been recorded where a besiegement took place and the enemy outweighed uh, the, the, the city was uh, in the 17th century. It's called the Siege of Can- Canada. And listen to how long it took. 22 years. 22 years. The enemy stayed outside the walls and outweighed until they gave up. And again, it's not what's on the outside, it's what was on the inside. So we have this great person that we can go to. How many know everything you need is right here? Everything you would ever need, direction, anything that you need in your life, there is something in here that can lead you and guide you. As we look into the Word of God, we see this great a uh, strategician and, and, and Hezekiah, who uh, was the king of Israel, he decided, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take Jerusalem and we're going to go inside the walls of Jerusalem. We're going to get ourselves prepared on the inside so that no matter who comes against us, no matter what army besieges us, we will be able to outlast them no matter how long they want to hang around. So what Hezekiah did was he went into the water system and he went into it and he put a new water system from the main water system out uh, in the rivers and everything around Jerusalem. He put a water system in to where it came into the city underground to where they always had water. And then he had it set up inside the city to where he had vegetation, to where they could grow their own crops and where they didn't need to go outside the walls. They had enough uh, area inside their uh, city to grow their crops and get all the food that they need and keep the food, food growing. They had bins of grain. They could put things back for the winter time. They could do all these things. They had areas where he had cattle and he had all the chickens and things that he needed. He fixed the inside of the wall. He got the inside of the walls prepared and ready for the besieged that may come against them, knowing that if we're right on the inside, if everything's good on the inside and the resources are there on the inside, we can outlast any enemy that sets up on the outside. And I love that story because it's so important that we understand it. You know, I put some verses here. Matthew 24, 13 says this, He that endures to the end shall be saved. Uh, and remember Matt, uh, Psalm 55, 22 says this, God is a sustaining God. That's what he does. He's a sustaining God. Isaiah 46, 4 says this, He will carry me even to my old age. Aren't you glad that God doesn't just carry you at certain times in your life? God carries you from the moment you're born to the day you die, amen? God knows the time that you're born. God knows the time that you're going to leave this world. And all the time in between, he's right there with you, walking with you, watching over you, holding you up in every way. He is a sustaining God. Let's give him a hand clap of praise. We love our God. He sustains us. You know, we have all the resources we need, but we got to get them on the inside. We've got to start getting the inside right with our resources so that when Satan comes and tries to outlast us, he won't be able to do it. Some of you, you've fought a battle in your life for a long, long time, and you're still fighting it. And my prayer is that somehow, some way, that what we're going to talk about, these four things that I want us to focus on today, these four things that I want us to concentrate when we leave this place today, to get them inside of us so that we can outlast our enemy. The first thing we're going to talk about today is we must have praise on the inside. Oh, let me tell you something. You want to you defeat the enemy? Just begin to praise God. 
You want to get ahead of your situation and have enough uh, strength to get to the next place where, uh, where God is taking you, even though it looks dark, even though it looks glim, even though you feel bad, even though uh, life's not going the way it is. I'm trust, uh, trusting me now. I'm telling you this right now. Praise is the answer to getting into the throne room of God and getting the sustaining power of God flowing in your life. When you can praise him when things are going bad, you are saying to him, I believe in you. When you praise him and you say, God, my situation's not good. The, do the doctor just diagnosed cancer in my life, but God, I praise you because I know who you are. I've seen what you do. I know you've been there here and here and here, and you're going to be there again, and I praise you for all your goodness. Guess what? You are saying to him, I have faith in you, God. I know who you are. And man, when you start to build your faith inside of you by praising God, all of a sudden now the resources inside of you start to build and get stronger and stronger and stronger. I always say this, and my wife is, is just, she just does this so well. I mean, uh, uh, with her situations and physical uh, problems that she faces sometimes, I come into the house and there's always praise music on. I love it. Because hey, you can't get in our house, uh, uh, other, sometimes you can, but most of the time there's praise music playing. And, and, and I believe this with all my heart, it sets an atmosphere. It sets an atmosphere. Now I'm going to say this, some of you need to change your car radios from uh, country music and, and, and going to the bars and cheating on your wives and, uh, and all that stuff. You need to change that to a better atmosphere where it's speaking about God and how much God does and the grace of God and the goodness of God. Amen. Let's give him a hand clap of praise. That's, that's an oh me or an amen. But I believe praise is that thing that we need to do. How many remember when uh, in, the, in a situation where uh, God told Joshua, you march around the city and you, you, you don't say a word? All right, don't just read it. You know, pastor loves, don't just read it. Live it. Can you imagine those soldiers when Joshua came to him and said, guys, we're going to march around the city seven times and just don't say nothing. Keep your mouth shut. Now, I, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt, I know people and you know people, you know that some of them soldiers were murmuring and complaining and thinking Joshua had lost his mind. Why are we circling the city? What, what is this all about? But how many remember when they finally were told, once you go around it this time and you finalize every, one that, uh, every trip that I told you to make, and when you get there, I want you now to praise me, and I want you to just shout with praise, and the walls will come down. How many know that praise brings walls down? Amen? How many know that praising God brings walls down that you never thought could ever come down? So we need to praise him in every way that we can. Praise him because his sustaining power, it's the promise that he's given us. I will be there for you. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you, even to the end of time. The second thing I want you to grab a hold of and put inside of you, work on this. We must have God's word on the inside of us. You know, we are facing a church generation now who is very biblically illiterate. I hate to say this. It breaks my heart. But we have kids that are in the 7th and 8th grade in, in our middle school that didn't even know who Jonah was. And some people say, oh, well, hold on a minute. Everybody I knew in school in the 7th and 8th grade knew who Jonah was because back then they were church. They were put in church. They were taken to church every Sunday morning. They were in children's church. They were in classes. They learned the word of God. They got it inside of them. But today we have an illiterate church out there who really doesn't even know what the word of God says. They're just hearing a message from the Reader's Digest and, and, a, and a current event message today and not really getting the true word of God that can sink down inside of us and cause us to be strong when we need to be strong. We need God's word inside of us. 
man, we need to be reading it. We need to be getting it through uh, uh, church services. We need to be getting it on our radios. We need to be getting it on social media. We need the word of God inside of us because the word of God is our food source. When the enemy is besieging us and he's surrounding us and he's got us surrounded, we can draw on the food, spiritual food that we need, and that's the word of God. I don't know about you, but there are times when I need the word of God to speak to me. I don't know about you, but there are times when the word of God comes to me. I don't know about you, but there are times when the word of God says to me, greater is he that is in me than he that is in this world. I don't know about you, but when the Bible says there's nothing that can come against you and can prosper against you because God has his hand on you. I don't know about you, but that's a resource I need inside of me. The third thing I want to bring to your attention is we need to give the Holy Spirit his freedom inside of us. We're going to talk about control. I have a problem with control. Not with somebody else having control. I have a problem with me keeping control. Amen? I'm not going to ask for a show of hands because i got a feeling maybe every hand in the house will go up. But if you have a problem with control, this is going to be something that's going to be very difficult because the Holy Spirit wants control. The Holy Spirit wants to take over so he can lead us and guide us and and, and give us the wisdom and knowledge that we need to get through the situation that we're in. But a lot of times, like myself, I want to keep control. I want to control it. I want, to, I want to say, okay, this is what we need to do to get through this, and then ask God to bless it. Uh-oh. I see some heads down. Don't raise your hand. I'm just saying there ain't probably not a person in this place has not said, God, this is the way we're going to do it, and I just need you to bless it. And all the while, we should be saying, Holy Spirit, I, this is too much for me. I can't do this. I can't control it. I can't, t- I can't change it. I can't, I can't shift it. I can't do anything with it. Holy Spirit, take over. Help me to listen to your voice. Help me to let you have control. Man, if we could give the Holy Spirit more control in our lives inside of us, uh, uh, I love this because we talked about the we talked about the Word of God being the food uh, of the Spirit. Uh, now we're talking about the Holy Spirit in the Bible. In John chapter seven, I'm going to read this to you. John chapter seven, thirty-seven through thirty-nine says this: On the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out, saying, "If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink." He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. How many know that water is a very important resource? (laughs) How many know that they say oxygen is the number one resource you got to have? Because if you don't have oxygen uh, for four minutes, you're probably going to be dead. Amen. Amen. But they say you can live for up to almost 60 days without food, but maybe not even make it four days without water. Water is so important to us, and it's a resource that we have to have. And Jesus himself says this, but this he spoke concerning the Spirit, whom those believing in him would receive, for the Holy Spirit was not given uh, at that time because Jesus was not yet glorified. In other words, Jesus was saying to us that the Holy Spirit will be the water that will help you get through. Now, I don't know about you, but if I have the food of the Word of God inside of me, and I have the Holy Spirit, who is the water that I need to get my resource of water, then I'm in pretty good shape for the long haul, amen? I'm going to be in pretty good shape to outlast my enemy when he puts a besiege on me. The last thing I want to give you and leave with you is this. We must have fellowship with Jesus. Fellowship with Jesus. Think about this. What do you do when you fellowship? You get together. You talk. 
You, I love the fellowship that, that I have with my brother and, and my Kairos brothers and you all and, 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 and the fellowship with Brother Bill and, and our ministry with Servants Heart. I love that fellowship. But that fellowship only happens when we talk to one another, when we communicate, when we pray with one another, when we work with one another, and when we're there for each other. It becomes fellowship. And I believe this with all my heart, that prayer is a key to the fellowship that we need in Jesus Christ. I believe this with all my heart. It's, it's happened in my own life because of time. That is one thing that gets cheated in my life is my prayer life. And I believe this with all my heart. If we're going to outlast the devil, it's going to be prayer and communication with Jesus that's going to keep us and help sustain us and get us through. I don't know about you, but I need to look at my prayer life. I need to look, where am I with my prayer life? Am I praying on a regular basis? Do I have a set time every day that I pray? Or do I just pray all day long? But the most important thing is, am I communicating and fellowshipping with Jesus? Am I connected with him? Do I know what he wants from me? Am I hearing his voice through the power of the Holy Spirit? Am I doing what he wants to do? It's so important that if we're going to outlast the devil, these four things we need to get inside of us. We need to be drinking and eating and doing these things inside of us so that when the devil comes and he puts that siege on us, we can outlast him. Oh, I love to be able to say, devil, I'm going to outlast you on this one. Oh, it don't look good right now, and you really got a, you got a really, really big army right now going on, but I'm telling you now, I will outlast you because of God's sustaining power. He holds us up when we're about to go down. When we fall down, he reaches down and picks us back up. When we do that thing called sin, guess what? He's waiting for us to come back to him, to take us back in and say, it's okay. Brush us off. Say, let's take the next step. That's the God we serve. His sustaining power is there for us. And if we can get on the inside of us, our praise going on the way we need to and his word working inside of us and the Holy Spirit working through us and praying in communication with Jesus, we can outlast our enemy. He will finally give up. He will finally go away and the victory will be ours. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. How many in here, this place today, will raise your hand and say, Pastor, the devil has come against me. He's set up an army around me, and I'm dealing with something. I've just been dealing with it for a long time. Come on, get your hand up. Amen. Put it up in front of you. It is me. Praise God. God is so good. Thank you for those hands all over the place. Here's what I feel we need to do. We're just going to open up the altar and we're going to ask anybody that wants to come, come forward. We're going to pray together as we close the service. Pray together as a church family. If you raised your hand, definitely if you can, come. If you can't, we're going to pray for you right there in your seat. Praise the Lord. Let it happen. Not letting it happen.